It's just occurred to me that in all the videos that I've uploaded, I never told y'all my name. So let's start this video with an introduction. Hi, my name's Chad, and welcome to This and That Garage. Now let me start off by saying I'm hardcore GM. I know nothing about Dodges. So you Dodge fellers, well, you just have to cut me some slack. It is a 1979 Custom 300 Club Cab. And the plate in the door says it's a D30. One ton. Well, like I said, I don't know nothing about Dodge. But from what I've read on interwebs, D means two-wheel drive. W means four-wheel drive. Well... It's a four-wheel drive. Why does the tag say D30? I don't know. Maybe some of y'all can tell me. Also, running the VIN number, which I know, I think it was 1980 is when they changed and went to the, what is it, 18-digit number. You know, sort of standardized it. This is 79, so that was before that. Well, I looked that VIN number up on some Dodge website. And it says that number is a D30. And it also says it's a uh, conventional cab well as you can see this is not conventional this is a club cab so I don't know if that uh, that tag has been swapped out from another truck or what uh, you know if you Dodge guys know is there a number on the frame that we can go by I don't know anyway let's take a look around it it ain't in bad shape I know it's got one heck of a front bumper on it my goodness like I said there ain't a whole lot of rust there's a little bit in this fender and that uh, rocker panel there definitely needs a good old bath but she's loaded down with junk on the bed and you'll see here in a minute the inside is loaded down pretty good too uh the tires are actually holding there i'm not sure how long it's been sitting here yet hopefully we can find a registration in the glove box because the owner he can't remember or the previous owner i guess i should say he can't remember how long it's been off the road uh Let's look at the other side real quick. This fender's got a dent, pretty good dent in it. And it's got about oh, three quarters of an inch Bondo on it. But it's still, it ain't too bad. A little bit of weight reduction there in the door. And I believe this, uh, <coughs> yeah, this rocker panel pretty eat up right there. But still overall, it's not too bad. The driver's side door won't open. Passenger side door won't close. So I got to work on them pretty quick. Let's open this glove box and just see what we can find. Let's see if we can find an old registration. Oh yeah, it's jam packed with stuff. Uh, let's see, what is this? This is an uh, application for title. What have we got here? This might be it here, nope. Another application for a title. What is this? Side terminal replacement bolt. That's good to know. Got some electrical tape. Old speaker cover. Got a gauge if I need to check pressure on something. This is exhaust flange gasket. That means we probably got an exhaust leak. Um, what is this little gadget here? I don't know what that is. That looks like some uh, wheel selling rebuild parts. That's not a good sign as far as brakes go. Uh, let's see. I just need to find the old registration. All right, here's an old registration right here. I ain't going to show you because it's got names on it. 10-31-2009. So that's 13 years that it's been off the road. That looks like a speedometer gear not sure though like i said i'm not a dodge guy uh i got lots of electrical tape so if i have electrical troubles i got them covered they just a bunch of junk in here some light bulbs uh anyway like i said the driver's side door does not open from the outside so let me crawl through and open that door i'm getting really old 
I'm too old for this. Ah. All right, we got it open. And I just noticed right here is this dual tanks. Let's look under it and see real quick. Well, it used to be, but there's only one hose hooked up now, so it's just a single tank. <coughs> Ooh, goodness. I need to put some oil on that door. That door is pretty squeaky too. Here's an old steering wheel. Where'd that come off of? Uh, I don't know. All right, let's get in and look at mileage. What kind of mileage we got? Well, that looks like 52,393. I'm gonna say she's 153, 152, whatever. Just going by the general looks of it. Actually, it's not too bad, really, to be honest with you. We got a nice headliner, metal. It is full of junk everywhere all over the dash and the floor back here in the back but i'll have to clean all this out before we go much further uh got a temperature gauge oil pressure gauge dare i hit the clutch and brake clutch that's not bad brakes here we go oh they go well well, the brake pedal sticks anyway. They don't go quite to the floor, but <laughs> brake pedal sticks. It won't come back up either. There it goes. Come up. All right. I wonder if it's got any gas in it. Let's take a whiff of it. Don't smell too bad. I'm sure it's pretty rotten though, 13 years old. Well, let's pop the hood and see what we got under there. Well, how do you operate this hood? Right here? Yep. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Well, there's the engine. My goodness, look at what a set of horns. We'll have to get them running. It's supposed to be a 318. Like I said, I don't know anything about Dodge. I don't even know where you look to get numbers, casting numbers. I have no clue. Uh, I have checked earlier and it's not stuck. It does have air. I don't know if it works. Um, it probably won't take a whole lot to get it running. Like I said, I don't know nothing about Dodge. Is this electronic ignition? Does it have points? I don't know. This is going to be an adventure for me. Does it have any Wata in it? Um, I don't see any. Oh, oh, you know what? I completely forgot. I completely forgot this. He told me that the freeze plugs rusted out on it. He replaced them on the sides, but the one in the back he never did. That's why it's parked, is because that uh, freeze plugs in the back rust and he didn't want to pull the transmission and fix them. Let's check the engine oil, see if it's got any in it. Well, it's barely showing on the dipstick, but it is on a hill. And this dip stick is in the front, so that may be why it's a little low. Uh, hmm. I really don't know where to start on this thing. I guess probably just put a battery in it and see if the starter works and see if we're getting spark. If we're getting those two things, then put some uh, gas in the carburetor and see what it does. This is a lovely wooden battery tray. Oh, that's some thick wood, too. I ain't got to worry about it for a while. Got a little decon, must have had a mouse problem. Here is the positive cable. Where is the negative cable? Oh, here it is right here in front of my face. All righty, well, let me get the battery in and we'll see what happens. Well, I got the battery in and I got the old bungee cord hold down, got it hooked up. Let's hook this negative cable up and, well, let's just see. We ain't getting no sparks there. So that's good, unless we ain't got no dead shorts. Let's go ahead and put it on. Now, let's go in here and just turn the key, see what happens. Apparently this was an automatic at one time. Now it's a four speed, I'm assuming. Let's take her out of gear. All right, here we go. Y'all ready to hit the starter? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Hmm. 
All right, I'm truly not playing dumb. I don't understand this Dodge stuff at all. You got a cable coming from the battery to this apparatus here. And then you got a wire that goes, well actually two wires go back that way. I'm pretty sure they go to the winch. And then off the battery side, it goes to this apparatus here and then down to the starter. And the wire that goes down to the starter is not very big. Is that the starter solenoid? I don't know. Oh, right here, what is this? Is that a starter solenoid? I'm really confused on this wiring right now. So let me see if I can figure it out and uh, at least get the starter working. Well, fellas, I've been scratching my head for a good 15 minutes trying to figure out what in the world's going on with this wiring. I had no clue what this was right here. I was getting 12 volts to here, but not on the other side of it. And I was like, well, it's not a solenoid. There's no wires for a solenoid. Then it dawned on me, hey, that looks like it's going through the fender. Well, guess what? <laughs> it's a it's a good old switch right there. Why? I don't know. But uh, let me see if the starter will do something now that I got that turned on. All right, here we go. Oh, I got some clicking. Oh, I got a fan running. Oh, we got power now, buddy. Oh, yeah, we're making progress anyway. I just wonder if something has got a drain on that battery is why that cutoff switch was put on there. It very well could be. All right, now that we've got power flowing to everything, after I figured out that was a cutoff switch, well, I got that part right there that's going down to the starter. But I also got this that looks like a starter solenoid. Which is it? I don't know why I can't figure it out just yet. I do have something clicking up here when I hit the switch. I think it's that one. But none of those wires go down to the starter. So give me a few more minutes, I'll figure it out. All right, upon further inspection, this solenoid here runs through this, what appears to be <laughs> lamp cord <laughs> over to the horns right there. So that's not star solenoid. This has to be the starter solenoid. It's clicking because I can hear it when it hit the key took the old chanty locks and whooped on the starter guess what we now have a starter that's turning over listen to that starter whine well, look at here it's got a little john deere tractor on the key chain now that we know the starter works i think we need to pull a sparking plug and just see if we're getting any kind of fire that'll be the next hurdle for me i guess trying to figure out how to make it fire that's a pretty good color right there not bad at all alrighty I got me a jumper wire here and let's just see if we're getting any spark no sir no sir let's just find a better ground but I don't think that's going to be the problem No siree. Well, I'm gonna pull that cap off and just look at it because like I said, I don't know anything about these. Alright, let me climb my big fat butt up here and look at this distributor and just see what it is. Oh wee! Alright, apparently. It is electronical ignition, by what I see in here. Cap looks wonderful. I'm gonna check the coil first, make sure it's okay. And I got three other trucks I can steal parts from, and we may steal the electronical ignition. Oh, I gotta get down, ooh. Ooh, I'm getting too old for this. Woo. All right, I checked the coal, it checks good, I actually, uh, took the wire off the ballast resistor over there and you know, would strike it like a match and I was getting spark through directly through the uh, coal and So I put the uh, Everything back together and uh, I started getting spark down here at the plug, but it's intermittent and Common sense says if it's electronic ignition, it's either gonna work or it's not gonna work usually 
this intermittent ignition tells me that it's possibly a ground or just a bad connection so i think i'm gonna start i don't know if that ignition module is grounded to the frame or not it probably is i'm gonna take it off clean all that up make sure i got a good ground we'll clean all the connections on the ballast resistor over there and i might come over here and clean the ground on the coil and anything else i can see and see if we can get a constant spark well i got the ignition control module out it was going to sand on the back side just in case it, you know, needed a good ground. And I think, I think I found a problem. I'm going to get the one out of this truck right here and we'll just see if it'll work. Well, for you non-Dodge fellers that are learning along with me, this is a five pin. That's a four pin. This is the uh, electronic ignition. When I first pulled it off, I saw, you know, different pin numbers. Well, I got on the old interwebs. And apparently they were interchanged with no problem. So I'm gonna put this on and hopefully we're gonna have spark. Well, apparently that ignition module is what the problem was, cause watch this. Oh yeah, we're getting spark. So I tell you what, the wiring on this truck, ooh, it's, it's bad. It's really, really bad. Anyway, I think now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unhook the fuel line from the fuel pump because I don't know what's in that gas tank. I don't know if it's a bunch of sludge, a bunch of rust. I don't know. I don't want it in the carburetor. So I'm gonna unhook the line there and see if I can get that carburetor filled up with some gasoline. And we're gonna give this thing a try. Well, I've got gas in this vicinity. Uh, I don't know if it's in the bowl or all of it's down in the intake. <laughs> like I said, I don't know Dodges. Is there a vent hole? There's two holes here. I put gas in there and it was coming out, going in the intake. I don't know. We're gonna see what happens when I hit the key. All right, let's give her the old try. there I cut it off to see if the fuel pump was pumping anything it's not yet but I think I'm gonna run that in the tank I'm gonna fill that carburetor back up and uh, we'll see if that fuel pump ever starts pumping all right let's see if you start up again <laughs> y'all think about that it's sitting there idling hadn't run in 13 years sitting there idling let me check the fuel line and see if there's anything pumping no sir that's just awesome right there though Out of gas but that is a-okay right there well the fuel pump ain't pumping at all i don't know if it's bad maybe the tank is empty i don't know i'm gonna rig up some kind of a tank so we can run it for a while well i can't run it very long though because i forgot uh about the freeze plug but we can run it a little bit uh what i'm amazed at is there's no knock there's no ticking there's no valve train noise at all i'm impressed dodge boys well, I'm up under the truck taking this line loose from the fuel pump. I'm going to blow air back through it, go into the tank, and just see if it stopped up. Well, the power steering pump has a slight leak. And I also noticed that this front cross member, motor mount, whatever, it's got a big old chunk that's been torched out of it to clear for the oil pan, I'm assuming. And the oil pan looks like it clearest itself on this front axle at some time that's nice i blew through the line going to the tank and uh it's definitely not stopped up now i probably wasted two or three gallons of gas that i put in there but i'm gonna fire it up and just see 
if that uh, fuel pump will start pumping now. I'm gonna say the fuel pump is bad because it's not pumping anything. It's got a little inline filter right there. I poured the gas in the line up here and I took that line loose down there. It's flowing through the filter so the filter is not completely stopped up anyway. So I'm gonna say that the fuel pump, the diaphragm's probably shot in it, you know, sitting 13 years. So I may get a fuel pump tomorrow, but I'm gonna get some water and fill this thing up I just want to see how bad that uh, freeze plug is leaking. Well, it's pouring out about as fast as I poured in. I'm gonna say that freeze plug is pretty shot. Let me get you down there and I'll show you. All right, I'm pouring it in. I don't know how well y'all will be able to see this, but there's some water dripping right there behind that flywheel. When I mean, it's dripping. Well, the water you see running is coming from right there in the middle of the screen. That's a freeze plug on the driver's side. Well, where a freeze plug is supposed to be, it's gone. So I'm gonna try to get one in there and then we'll fill it back up and if this here is just a drip, this back one, then we're going to fire this thing up and I'm going to I'm gonna try to drive it. Well, I think what I'm going to do is spray some of these exhaust bolts down and let them soak overnight. That way, maybe I can get that exhaust manifold off and I can get to that freeze plug a lot easier. Well, we're back for day two. Let's see if we can get that exhaust manifold off so I can get that freeze plug put in. Well, that just come right loose. I hope the rest of them do that. Well, what size are you, little feller? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what size these are. You're not a half, and you're not a seven sixteenths. So, are you metric? Surely not. Holy crap, holy. 12 millimeter it is. All right, I'm gonna leave that one in. I gotta get down below and get them uh, exhaust flange bolts loose. Well, after I got the exhaust pipe out of the way, I realized that it's much easier to get that freeze plug in down here. I took that manifold loose for nothing. Oh well. I'm gonna clean it up with a little sandpaper and put some RTV on it and pop it in and we'll be done down here, hopefully. And there it is. We now have a freeze plug. I'm going to go up there and uh, fill it up before I put the exhaust back on. Make sure this one doesn't leak. And we'll check and see how bad this one back here in the back leaks. All right. That freeze plug is holding. Got this very small leak back here. See it dripping off the flywheel. I think it's good enough to be able to drive it home anyway. So now I think I'm going to get up front there. Get the fuel pump off and then take it to O'Reilly's and see if I can find one. All right, I can see most of the casting number. And right there is what tells me the displacement. It is a 318. Those other numbers, I don't know if they tell me what year or not. I think the year is on the casting or the stamp number on the front of the block. And I'll be looking for it here in a minute. All right, I cleaned the front of the block off where the stamp numbers are. And I believe, if I get just right, you can see 5M318. So I believe that means it's a 75, 318, and the M is the uh, factory code. All right, I'm back from O O O O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Got a new fuel pump. I got a filter. I got some hose. I got some oil. I got an oil filter. A few other things. 
But take a look at this old pump, the gasket on it. See that right there? I guarantee you that will account for a lot of the oil on the front of the motor. So we're going to be sure not do that on the new one. So let me get all this put on and then I'll be right back. We now have a brand new fuel pump. I put a clear fuel filter on it so I can see what kind of stuff is coming out of the uh, tank and line. And yes, that filter is on the suction side of the pump. Q interweb experts. Oh my gosh, you put a filter on the suction side of a mechanical pump? Yes, yes I did. I don't want trash in my new pump. Now that I got the new fuel pump on, hopefully it's gonna pump fuel up here to the carburetor and this thing will sit here and idle and run all day long, warm up. We can check the thermostat, make sure it's not gonna stick. And whilst it's doing that, I'm gonna put some bars leak in it. Hopefully stop that leak in that rear freeze plug. If it don't, then oh well. So let me get the carburetor filled up with gas and get it started up and hopefully that fuel pump's gonna act right. Fuel pump seems to be working. It's been sitting there idling three or four minutes now. So I'll just let it sit here and warm up. And uh, I might check the brakes here in a minute. Temperature hadn't come up yet, but it's got about 50, 55 pounds of oil pressure. It's pretty good. I can smell that old gas burning out the exhaust too. Man, it stinks. You probably can't see it, but she's smoking quite a bit. Uh, and it's all old gas though. It ain't, it ain't oil. I guess I probably need to go to the store and get another five gallons and put it in that tank, try to dilute it. Temperature's up to about 150 or so. I don't think the thermostat's open yet because I don't see any water flowing. I think what I'm gonna do, this thing's got a miss. I'm gonna pull uh, plug wires off one at a time and see which cylinder is dead. Well, pulling them plug wires on, it acts like it's got three or four dead cylinders. I might have to get a set of plugs and wires for it. Well, it's been sitting there idling 15, 20 minutes. Oil pressure dropped way down to about 20. And the temperature gauge just does whatever it wants to when you pull with the wires in the back. So I don't trust it at all. And the thermostat hadn't opened yet because there's no water flowing. So I think the thermostat may be stuck. Well, it's been running 25 or 30 minutes. Water's still not flowing. I mean, it's not super hot to the touch, but it is pretty hot. Uh, I don't trust that temperature gauge at all, so I shut it off. Uh, I think I may go ahead and replace the thermostat. But right now, let's pull the cover off of that brake master cylinder and see how bad that looks. Well, the front one looks completely empty. Let me get up here and look at it. Yep, it's completely empty and there's something in it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> it's the top to a brake fluid can probably. Well, that's, that's great. Um, I'm gonna fill that front one up with some fluid and just see what happens. Well, the fluid level has dropped in that front one. So I'm gonna put some more in it and uh, keep pumping them, let's just see what happens. See all that fluid right there? It's dripping right over here too. I think we got a busted brake line. Great. Alrighty, I think I found the brake, and the brake line is right here, right there next to that clamp. I hate, I hate steel clamps on steel brake lines. The rest of it, it ain't too bad looking. So I think just for now, I'm going to just replace this little section right here and uh, be done with it. But something I have noticed while under here, I don't know if this is from the factory or not, it looks like somebody extended this frame. It looks, looks like it's been welded here and welded right here. It's hard to see there. The other side, you can see it really good. Let me get over there and show you. Right there. Been welded, and then you come down here, been welded there. Is that uh, from the factory? Did somebody extend this? I don't know. 
Upon further inspection of this frame, it's definitely not from the factory. You can see that cut right there is jagged as it can be done with a torch. What it is is this piece here is like an L shape and it's put inside of the frame. I'm assuming to reinforce it is a really bad weld right here. It's welded up here. So I don't really know what's going on with that. And then you got this right here where it's so rusted it's starting to swell and separate. So I don't think I'm going to be loading this truck until I check this frame out really, really good. I already got the line cut loose here. And then I saw here where, where's it at? This, uh, yeah, right here, this clamp is leaking there. That's why I hate steel to steel. Then behind this cross member, there is a connection right there. And then you go another two feet and you've got it where it goes into the hose. So I'm going to be attempting to take it loose right there from that hose. Bad idea? Probably. I decided to go ahead and pull the entire back brake line from there to here. And then here's the back half where I'd already cut it. It was leaking here. There was a clamp there. Leaking here. There was a clamp there. I do not like metal clamps on brake lines or anything. Fuel line, it don't matter. Anyway, I did get this in loose without twisting off the line, but this end here, it was at the proportion of valve. It twisted off of me, but it don't matter because I'm replacing it. So I think what I'm gonna do now is go up here and uh, pull this master cylinder off and see if that's what's sticking or if it's the booster or if it's the brake pedal itself. Well, you ain't gonna believe me unless I show you. But I got both these fittings off the master cylinder loose and did not twist the brake line. Cool. And as I suspected, the uh, master cylinder is not the cause of the sticking brake pedal. I'm gonna go in here and uh, spray this pedal with uh, <coughs> some kind of lube up in here. Hopefully that'll fix it, but I don't know. See, that still sticks. Well, after about 30 minutes of working this pedal up and down and then spraying it with lube and whatnot up in there, Watch this. It sort of returns. <laughs> it's a lot better than it was. I still have to work on it some, but it's a lot better than it was. And it's got a, it's got a spring right here. Somebody put, so apparently it's been a problem for a while. But here's your little tip that I do sometimes. Like on this here, you got a shaft that something's pivoting on it. Well, before you hit it with lube, hit it with some, uh, carb cleaner and spray the dirt and crap out first. It'll free up some then. Then you can hit it with the loop. All right, I'm back from the Iris Auto Parts store for the second time. I got a master cylinder, I got brake fluid, I got spark plugs, thermostat, an assortment of brake lines. I didn't really wanna to have to piece this brake line together, but I, I don't really have a choice right now. They gave me their own fittings, so I had to go back and get the right ones. Always check stuff, you know, don't, don't just trust them. Always check it. Anyway, I got the master cylinder in, it's bled. I'm fixing to put this uh, brake line in. Then I'm gonna try to gravity bleed them. That's usually pretty good for me. We'll just have to see. But while it's gravity bleeding, I'm going to change spark plugs, the thermostat, and do all that. So let me get this brake line in first. Also, if you don't ever listen to anything else I say, please listen to this. When you're connecting two brake lines, Please never, ever, ever use compression fittings. Always use flare fittings. These lines see upwards of 1,000 pounds of pressure, maybe a little more. I don't trust that to a compression fitting. So please always use flare fittings. I'm up under here flaring this uh, end on this brake line. Got me thinking, how many times have y'all flared a piece of tubing? <laughs> I forgot to put the nut on it. I've done it several times. Not on this one, but I have done it several times. Got the brake lines hooked up to the master cylinder. Got it full of fluid. I got both bleeders on the back open. Whilst I wait on this to gravity bleed, hopefully, I'm going to put plugs in it. I'm going to put a thermostat in it. I got orange flavored plugs. Orange is my favorite. I'm going to give you all a lesson on setting a gap on plugs. First, you open the box. You get the plug out. You hold it up like this, you look at it and say, yep, got a gap. 
Got the plugs changed. I think I know at least two that wasn't firing. This one here is mashed almost closed. There's a small gap, but it's got trash in it, so it wasn't firing. Then this one here, it really is mashed flat. Don't know why, but that's at least two that wasn't firing. Now my brakes, I'm getting uh, fluid on the driver's side, so I cl uh, closed it off. I'm not getting any on the driver's side. It's been 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So I don't know what's going on with that. So I may have to get somebody out here to help me bleed them manually. But I'm gonna give it a little more time and uh, see if I can get this thermostat changed. All right, here is another head scratcher on this truck. I just gathered up all these spark plugs fixing to throw them in the bag. And I noticed two of them are not like the others. I'll give you a second, can you figure it out? All right, these two right here, they are the gasket type. The rest of them are tapered. When I first pulled these out on this side here earlier today, it was this one here. See how oily it is? It made me think that spark plug wasn't seating or sealing. It was seated because it was all these were pretty hard to get out on this side. So the only way that oil could get there is if it's blowing by that uh, seal. Well, I got this one here that is the gasket type, and it's even worse about the oil being all over it. Like I said, they were all very tight. Well, earlier, I took a picture of the hole, just as close as I could get with my camera, and then blew it up, and it looks tapered, but the taper looks serrated. And then right above that, it looks flat, like for a gasket. I'll take a picture of it again, and I'll put it right here and let y'all see what I'm talking about. But y'all help me out. How am I supposed to know what spark plugs this, does, this thing gets? Is it tapered? Is it gasket? I don't know. We are now getting fluid out of the passenger side. It was stopped up. I took the bleeder completely out and then stuck a, a piece of wire down in the hole in the wheel cylinder. And there she comes. So now maybe we'll have brakes. I sure hope I don't have to go into the brakes on the back of this thing. Got the wrong thermostat. This is the new one. It's a lot smaller. I'm getting to where I don't like Dodge again. Why can't they be like Chevrolet? I can go in there and pick any year from 55 to 86, and it's pretty much gonna be the same part. Anyway, losing daylight, I'm fixing to shut it down, and hopefully uh, we can have some breaks tomorrow, get the thermostat in, and get this thing to where I got the water flow so I can get that bar's leak back to that uh, rear freeze plug, and then maybe we can air the tires up, and we can drive this thing out of here. Well, it's the next day. I'm back from Ireland getting the right thermostat. And upon further research on these thermostats, let me explain it to you. In 1979, apparently Chrysler decided to change the diameter of their thermostats. They went from a two and a half inch to a two and an eighth inch. So now you know. Let me get this thermostat put in. We'll fire this thing up. Well, actually first, I think I'll do an oil change. Then we'll fire it up see if those spark plugs fix the miss and let it warm up and hopefully uh it'll circulate that bars leak and then we can proceed with all the other stuff here's your little tip on changing your oil filter what's missing right here that gasket that gasket's still on the block i just noticed it when i got out from under and uh got the new one uh always make dang sure that you do not double gasket that filter because it will leak. I promise you it will leak. I think I know why the temperature gauge is fluctuating. That's loose. That's really, really loose. So let me get that tightened up and we'll see if that gauge works. Alrighty, we got the thermostat in. I got the oil changed. Hopefully got the temperature gauge fixed. Got it full of water. So I think I'm gonna start it up. Let's sit here and run. Warm up, circulate that bar's leak. And while it's doing that, I think I'm going to work on the doors, see if I can't get them to operate like they ought to. Well, the passenger side door is operating at about oh, 75%. This still wants to hang. If you hit it, it works. See, it's shut. Driver's side door, 
Well, look at there, it opened that time. I've been having to fight it. Hmm, cool. But let me show you this. This truck has been sitting there idling for one hour. You see where the temperature's at? I'm barely getting any water flow. Why? Never seen one do this before. You know, 180 degree thermostat means it's gonna run at about 180 degrees once everything starts flowing. I don't know. It is running pretty good. It's still got a little mist. That's most likely the most spark plug wires. And it revs up pretty good. Let me uh, let me get up there and show you. But <laughs> she's smoking like a freight train. That ain't good right there. But maybe if I can ever get it up to temperature, you know, maybe that some of that stuff will go away. I don't know. I also got both windows operating now. the bed's nice and clean let's start on the inside now well the inside's clean now it only took me about 45 minutes to do it everything's out of the floorboard nothing on the dash well, except for my gear shift lever and let me show you <laughs> what was on the inside i've got to get way back to get it all in the picture that's everything that was inside there's uh five heavy duty ratchet straps a couple of log chains there's a boom uh that old steering wheel he said it come off a rambler a couple of drop hitches two buckets full of stuff i mean it's just <laughs> everything the man liked his junk i also found this stuff on the inside i thought it was kind of cool i believe that right there goes to an opal he had a lot of opals these they're not chevrolet so i'm assuming ford i don't know then i found this uh analog meter i might try to get that from him because i need a good analog meter Anyway, I think what I'm gonna do now is uh, go about 100 yards that way, pump the tires up, and then take another short trip to Mama's, get her shop vac out, and clean up the inside, get just, just a lot of dust. Then we'll take her on the road, see how she does. And then we might take it to my house and give it a bath. I'm gonna start it in gear, see if it'll break loose.
Well, the good news is it's got pretty good brakes. Bad news, the clutch will not come unstuck. So I think I'm gonna stick it in second gear, head that way and take it to mama's and may have to leave it sitting there till I can get that clutch unstuck. <laughs> I probably should have wiped that windshield off because I can't see nothing. Yeah, it's got decent brakes. Look at there, clutch just broke loose. As I was saying before we were rudely interrupted by the phone falling, the clutch just broke loose. Look at there. first time I ever got in this truck, I had a little trouble getting my legs under the steering wheel here. There ain't a whole lot of room. I thought, well, that steering wheel probably don't belong on here. It's, you know, a little too big. Nope. Whilst I was vacuuming it out, I noticed this. They've got her kicked back with a 2 before. Why? I don't know. Maybe they wanted to feel like they were at home watching TV. Now that I got it vacuumed out, maybe I won't get all that dust and dirt in my eyes. Oh, and I found some more weight reduction under that floor mat over there. That's why I put it back. Oh, uh, you know, I said we was gonna take it for a drive. Well, I've changed my mind. Let me show you this tire right over here. I don't know how well that'll show up on the camera, but that is some major, major cracking going on right there. I don't think we're going for a drive other than to get it to my house and maybe give it a bath. Fixed. Now that I got the transfer case in high gear, I got a little spot clean in the windshield. I'm probably gonna have to use sandpaper on the rest of it. Let's hit the road and go to my house.
got a granny low, that's for sure. fun at about 38 and a half mile an hour there's something that starts shaking over here and then when you're taking off i don't know it feels like the floorboard's moving maybe something hitting it possibly broken the motor mount i'm not sure but other than that it did really good steering was actually pretty tight i was surprised at that i think we ought to give this dirty thing a good bath a smidge better yeah not really we did lose a little paint in that uh, wash job but that just adds to the patina and i had completely forgotten about this raised white leather tire on the back i'm telling you i love them and i'm gonna bring them back one way or the other uh i guess it does look a little better you can actually see out of the windows anyway dang it look at that hang on just a minute fixed again anyway uh you know what i completely forgot well two things one there is no water leak anymore bars leak is awesome and i completely forgot to check and see if the winch works so let me get the cable out and we'll check it real quick i got it plugged up i took the cover off look at there it's a mopar winch i didn't know there was such a thing what does that add about 25 dollars i'll take it I hit the button, it'll go one way, it just clicks the other way. So I'll have to take that apart and check that out sometime, see what's going on. And also, I just realized while I was washing it that it's got a sliding back window. Didn't know that. And I completely forgot this right here. See this pipe here? That used to be the exhaust. The guy I bought it from said they had the exhaust pipe running there. He cut it off and put mufflers on it because he said it was really loud. Well, I'm curious, and I think sometime or another, we're going to see just what it sounds like coming out of them stacks. The old girl, she's, you know, she's kind of rough. The steering, actually great, but there's something loose. I don't know. Good gracious, what are they shooting over there? Anyway, there's something loose. I don't know if it's a motor mount, transmission mount. Transfer K. I don't know. Maybe the body's loose, but something is moving around and it feels like the floorboard is flexing And we'll have to check that out too and it's running pretty rough. So she's gonna need some plug wires, maybe a Cap. I don't know. We'll just have to get into it and see sometime also The fella I bought it from I've known him for years and years And he said he's got three more Dodge trucks another one-ton dually like this 
I think it's just a regular cab though. But he said it had the dump bed on it. And I can have it if I want it. So, we may do a dump bed swap sometime on this old truck. Well, that'll do it for this episode. We got another one back on the road. Well, I don't know about on the road, but she's running, sort of. Be looking for more from this one here because we'll do more with it. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe. Share the video with your friends. Hit that notification bell. And until next time, go do something.